April 2 every year is World Autism Day. The day is set aside to create awareness about autism and also encourage early diagnosis and early detection. As we celebrate World Autism Day this year, we throw the spotlight on one of the institutions supporting the needs of these children. This is the learning center for children here at the Hope Setters Autism Center here in Tema. And as I said early on, the day is set aside to create awareness about autism. So at this center, you can see some of the messages that will be rolling on that day. We have persons with autism things and see the world differently. Persons with autism improve with therapy. Autism appears during a child's first three years. And we have a host of them. Autism affects children differently. We have a lot of them here at the center. Let us talk to founder of Hope Setters Autism Center, Baba Encho. Thanks so much for joining us. First of all, we'd like to find out um, when was the center set up and over the period, how has it supported these children? Okay, Hope Setters was started about um, three years ago and it has gone a long way to support children living with um, autism in the te in Tema metropolis and its environment because now they don't have to travel to Accra um, that distance to get education or get support so they they come here we give them social skills we give them training in self-help skills we give them training in speech and language behavior management, and uh, basic academic skills that's what we do with them here basically for, for him what is he doing? What? Okay, he doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to do anything today. And so he's giving out this behavior. Any activity that we give him, he just pushes aside. So we just want to give him a break for some time and then we'll see the next thing to do with him when he comes down because if he's in this mood, he won't do anything. So we would let him step in uh, the carer, take him out for a while for him to cool down and then he'll come back to his activities. Well, so apart from taking him outside, can't you, is there a way that you can find out from him exactly what he wants to do? We've given him pictures, we try to give him pictures of different activities that he does in a day so he can choose what he wanted and he just pushed all the pictures away. It means he just wants a time off. So that's what we'll give him and he'll cool down for a while and then we'll bring him back into the classroom. Well, so this brings the question. Uh, we know that you are doing a lot for these children, so they know exactly what they want to do and what not to do. They come from homes, their parents, gardens, people they live with. How are they able to know exactly what is wrong? For example, this boy, uh, if the mother, do you give them some training of that sort? Yes, we do parents training, we have parents meetings, we have a WhatsApp group. That if parents have issues, they can ask questions on and then we'll support them in that way. And then every morning too, they come in here with their kids. And so if the parent is having a particular issue, they just come in the morning, tell us about it, and then we give them the various strategies to use with the child. How challenging is it? For you, as the founder of this, uh, we'll ask some of your uh, facilitators or the teachers, but for you, as the founder of this school, how challenging has it been for you? It's been very challenging, first, because um, I don't have that much space for me to be able to assist every child that comes in here. And I need very good trained personnel to be able to run this place because I can't do it all by myself. And which means that I have to do the training of the teachers too by myself so that they'll be able to take care of the children and support them in the classrooms. We've had challenges of people not being able to come in here because of the distance. Though we are in Tema, we have people who live around uh, Michelle Camp and all that and or Spintex Road and it's difficult for them to also come here to um, assess our services. So I see divisions here in the um, classroom. What exactly do they do? So for this class what do they do? 
Okay, so this is the Apple class. They've been grouped according to their capabilities and their age. And now what they are doing, the theme for this uh, term is bathroom, things in the bathroom. So we have various things that we use in the bathroom here, and the child is supposed to turn and look for the same thing and also label because the teacher is also going to label it to the child. Let me find out from the teacher how the children are learning, uh, what they're teaching them. Uh, is it at a pace that you want it or uh, they are trying? Um, they are trying very hard and it's, it's, it's things that we want them to know as individual that they are supposed to do for themselves that they don't need anybody to prompt them. So when he wake up and said, Selector, please give me toothbrush, he will be able to identify it by himself and then do whatever he wants to use the toothbrush to. So for him, how long has he been doing this? And um, you know, how fast has he been able to uh, know exactly what you're teaching? Uh, for, uh, for the start, um, we started this, this month. So for the start, early beginning of this month, it was a bit slow and difficult for him to be able to identify. But now he's picking up gradually. Let me talk to him. Hello, how are you? Uh, You're fine. What's your name? Can you show me where toothbrush is? Toothbrush. Wow, okay. Clap for yourself. You've done well. Is it not because he knows that every day shower is here? No, we, we change the positions of the pictures. We don't always place them where you see them today. We always change. After the activity, we change for them to be just to make sure they know what we are talking about and they know what they are picking. Thank you. Thanks so much. And so with much commitment supporting facilities like this, these children will be able to do things on their own. Let's move on uh, to other classrooms, what they're doing. Hello. What are you doing? Rice play. Rice play. Ah, that's good. So let me join and see exactly what this uh, rice play is all about. Hello, pretty little. What are you doing? Rice play. Do it and let me see. So what is the rice play all about? Um, rice play is all about, we use the rice play to get the attention eye contact but for now what we are doing we are proving on their fine motor skill that is their that's a that's why we're using the rice play that is the fetching and the pouring so how will you rate their performance for for her um how long has she been doing it and when you tell her to do it uh, exactly what you want are you able to uh, identify that you know you are making progress yes yes we are making progress both of them are doing well but She's a little down, but she's improving. For her, she's doing it for the eye contact. Are you excited about what you're doing? Are you excited about what you're doing? Yes. Okay, so she's nodding, meaning that she understands what I am saying. Do it and let me see. Do it and let me clap for you. Okay. Do it again. Fetch. And for, for, for these children, uh, would you say that uh, without this, they cannot, you know, do exact, for the example, the eye contact and getting the attention? Without this, can't they do anything? 
No, it doesn't come naturally to them. So you need to really work on them. For Kukwa, you need to work, work on her to be able to get her eye contact for some time so you can get her attention. Because if it's, and you know, autism affects their speech and language. Now, if you need to communicate with somebody, the person needs to give you the attention. The person needs to give you some eye contact for some time. So it's all towards their uh, communication skills. That's how come we are doing all these things. Hello. What are you doing? What are you doing? I drawing. You are drawing. Drawing what? Um, you are shading color G M G. The letter G. Right. Mm. Okay. So he wrote the G himself. So he, he he's is what drawing. He really likes to draw, and usually he wants to draw animals and draw them according to the alphabet. So he'll draw his gene, the small gene, and then draw the animal. And he'll make it very detailed so that you know what he's drawing. And that is uh, Marvin's twin brother. Okay. So for him, apart from, apart from drawing, or that is where his interest now, lies most? Yes, that's where his interest lies. But apart from that, he does very well with academic work. He can now identify some of the, um, um, the CD notes that we have. Okay. Yes, and he understands that this is 50 Ghana, this is 10 Ghana, this is 20 Ghana. He has some amount of speech, so he's able to tell you his needs. Unlike the other one who was just giving us that tantrum, he will be able to tell you, I want this, I want to do this, or I don't want to do that. In yeah. fact, I like the way he's going up. He's drawing with so much ease. Yes, yes. Much ease. You know, the way he wrote the letter H. He has, naturally, yes. Nobody taught him to do he just knows how to do but this is his class and looking at uh, the different people that are in the same class mm -hmm. he likes to draw this one likes to do some other things mm -hmm. uh, putting all of them in one class wonder they affect him or any of mm -hmm. right now right now what we have is individual work so they've oh, in the morning they've done group work as a class uh -huh. so now they have individual interest work so he likes to draw he's doing the drawing he likes the bubble so he's on the bubble for a while and it's usually for 30 minutes and then you have a break and you do another thing and um juliana here is working on five motors because she has issues juliana has mild cerebral palsy yes so she has issues with her fine motor skills and her fingers so she's trying to put those papers in and then pull them all out when she's done so you 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 are doing a great job here but um, i want to find out from you um last time you were in parliament you were part of a team that went to parliament i want to find out exactly um what you people did at, in parliament the other day okay we went to parliament to pre present a petition which basically says that we need government support and that the fact that the children have the right to education and so we need them to be able to create that facility so that these children will be able to go to mainstream school with a facilitator in the classroom most schools are not accepting that and then also that the government will realize that there are lots more people coming up with autism and so the support that um, persons with disability get we also need to get usually people don't regard us as also, we also having um, a disability and needing that much help so we need that much help too from government so that's how come the various centers came together and we went to the parliament house and of course we took some of the children so they understand what we are talking about yes but when you went to parliament what was the reaction you went with them i know they might have done a lot of noise and all that what was the reaction there? yes i remember one one of the ladies who worked there telling me oh madam can you control the child and i'm like yeah. he can't be controlled that when the speaker comes there's so much there'll be so much noise he won't tolerate i said let the speaker understand that this is a child with autism or these are children with autism and so uh, fortunately for us the speaker understood so when he sat down that was the first announcement that he made to the honorable members in the house that we have uh, persons with special needs and to, like autism persons with autism in the house and so if they hear noises coming from upstairs it's because we're there and we made sure that our presence were felt, was felt by doing what <laughs> by the children making them know and being themselves I think it should be given urgent attention because we came there parents teachers students uh, i mean children with autism and that that alone should let them know that there are people in ghana 
who have to live with these children 24 7. There are parents who have to go through everything and also work to make sure they fend for these children. So I think it's with a matter of urgency, just like they were approved of their cars and all other things in Parliament. On the day, what exactly would you be doing? Um, because 2nd of April this time is on Sunday, or uh, 1st of April, for us in Tema, Hope Setters, we are organizing a walk through some principal streets of Tema. We'll come back to the center after the walk. We have exhibition of some of the things that the children do. We have snack. We talk about autism. Whilst we are going on the walk, we'll also be sharing flyers, and it's all as a way of creating awareness in the Tema municipality. Thanks so much for welcoming us here to the Hope Setters uh, Autism Centre in Tema. We are grateful and I must say you're doing a really good job here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, so as she said, members of parliament, when this petition gets to them, they should give the maximum attention that they would give to all other issues that concerns them urgently. Esi Benewanyame, Hope Setters Autism Center here in Tema.